I think the last thing that people would want to see in, in Alberta cities would be to become like Vancouver's downtown east side. So um, maybe um, maybe explain the Alberta uh, model, the, sure. the Alberta way, and what, what you propose and your government proposes when it comes to recovery and addiction and mental health, as opposed to uh, what someone on the other side of the political spectrum believe is best. Well, let, let's start with the encampments because that became a bit of an issue at the end of last year and is going to be a continued issue over the next couple of weeks is that the Edmonton Police Service now realizes just how much gang and uh, organized crime activity are happening in these encampments. So the courts have told us that as long as there's bed space available in shelters, the Edmonton Police Service is able to remove those encampments. So one of the first steps is let's make sure that we've got enough shelter space. Mm -hmm. So we've increased shelter space in, in Edmonton. So that gives somebody up a starting point to get off the street into an environment where they can then get connected to their options. The second option is building um, our recovery communities. And we've, we've built two of them. We opened the one in, uh, in Red Deer and uh, in Lethbridge last year. And there's 75 bed facilities, 50 on the male side, 25 on the female side. They're all outfitted with kitchens and when you go there, you're going to work. You're going to work on yourself. There's intensive therapy that has to happen in a group environment and then chores in the afternoon and then the different groups uh, flip. But we, we want to make sure that somebody is not only getting clean, getting on re uh, opioid replacement therapy, whether it's um, Suboxone or some other uh, type of replacement, getting rebuilding what we call their recovery capacity. So getting connected again with family, friends, community, a job, learning skills, learning how to cook for themselves, learning how to shop. Those are all things, if you've been on the street for a while, that we take it for granted. People know how to do those things. Mm -hmm. They don't. Mm -hmm. And our hope is that by the end of that treatment, whether it's one month or six months or a year, that a person has enough recovery capital built that they're going to be able to go on and live an independent life. So that's when we would step in with income support, or uh, job training to get them their first job and the housing so that they can get their own apartment. But that's the that's what we're trying to build. We're, we're just at the beginning phase of it. We don't have enough beds. We're going to have 10 of these recovery communities, four of them in partnership with First Nations because we want to ensure that there's a, a respect for Indigenous traditions as we go through this process as well. And uh, the final piece on that is going to be uh, the Compassionate Care Act because once we have a place for people to go, we will, you, we will certainly open it th to those who are motivated to take care of themselves and get on a new track. But there are going to be some that will need a nudge and it's either, you got two tracks here, you're going to jail or going into recovery. And we're, we're hoping to give as many pathways to recovery as we possibly can.